All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, we uh, really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this discussion. I'm really excited. We have a great panel here for you. Uh, and um, we're excited to hear some of your questions as well. So make sure you get those ready. Uh, so welcome to Northern Now. This is the uh, digital event series presented by NMU Alumni Relations for our alumni and friends. My name is Kylie Bunting. I am the digital engagement architect for alumni relations here at NMU. And I'm really glad that you've joined us for tonight's panel discussion. We're excited to continue this series and share some insight from some of our theater and dance alumni. First, I'd like to share a couple of logistics. Uh, we, while we are unable to see and hear you in this webinar format, we are still um, wanting to hear from you. So um, Jill will be monitoring the Q&A section. And so if you have any questions or comments for our panelists, make sure that you uh, put, put them there and she can make sure that, they, that she asks the questions. Um, also, you can use the chat function at the bottom of your screen to chat with fellow alumni and friends who are tuning in. Please note in the chat window that there's a drop down menu to send chats to hosts and panelists or to everyone. Make sure um, you change this to everybody. It's defaulted to uh, hosts and panelists. So when you send a chat, it will just go to us who you see on the screen. So if you want to talk to everybody on there, make sure you change that to everyone. Some upcoming events I want to talk about. Uh, Northern Now takes place the second Wednesday of every month. And in February, we're partnering with NMU's Center for Rural Health for a panel discussion. And in March, we're partnering with NMU's Art and Design Department to hear from students, alumni, and faculty on the program. Another event I wanted to mention on April 9th, we are having alumni night at Little Caesars Arena um, to watch the Detroit Red Wings and the St. Louis Blue Jackets. Um, and uh, the special offer includes a discounted ticket to the Red Wings versus Blue Jackets game, plus a really cool limited edition um, NMU Red Wing beanie, which is awesome. You can see a picture of it on our website, um, and also a gift to NMU student scholarship. So we encourage you to join us for that. Um, you can purchase tickets for the Wings game now on our website, and uh, more information and registration will be open for the other events soon. Um, I also want to take a moment to just mention Wildcats Connect, if you have heard of it. Um, it's a platform for our alumni and students to ask and offer advice. Uh, your biggest resource is um, each other, is uh, your fellow Wildcats. And we've created this platform as an easy way for you to connect with those alums, um, to connect with fellow students, faculty, and staff. Um, it's a great way to help out students. It's a great way to stay connected to the university and also to get in touch with fellow alumni. So um, please visit uh, our website, nmu.edu slash alumni slash Wildcats Connect. Um, and please, um, we encourage you to sign up for that and help keep everybody connected and um, help each other. And uh, don't forget to follow us on social media. That's where we come up, that's where we share all of our upcoming events. That's where we share some great alumni successes. So um, keep in touch with us that way. And now I would like to welcome our moderator for the um, evening. Jill Grunstrom, who is a 2004 and a 2020 graduate of NMU. She is currently the assistant professor and co-director of NMU Theater and Dance. Welcome, Jill. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, we are thrilled to introduce tonight's theater and a dance alumni. And we're so excited for this conversation. Uh, just a reminder before we get started, feel free definitely to share your questions for the panelists in the Q&A function at any time. So to start us off tonight, I'd love to welcome Michael Detroit, who is a 1985 graduate of NMU and executive producer of Playhouse on the Square, which is a 52-year-old nonprofit professional resident theater company located in Memphis, Tennessee. Michael is also the creator and audition coordinator for the Unified Professional Theater Auditions, the largest combined audition in the United States, bringing approximately 1,100 theater professionals and 85 theater companies together yearly. Michael received his BME from NMU and an MFA from San Diego State University in 1989. Welcome, Michael. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey folks, thank you, Jill and uh, Kylie. You know, I'm really, really happy to be here. Uh, any chance, you know, I have to meet folks from Northern and network and share stories, you know, especially in our business, right, in the arts, 
theater, music, dance. Uh, it's so important for us to uh, get to know each other and share stories and network the heck out of you know all of our networks uh, so we can work at a time when certainly it's very challenging for everybody in our business right now and uh yeah so you know a little bit about myself uh, is born and raised in marquette went to marquette senior high school uh was you know in music and did i was dragged into the theater because i could sing and uh, that's how I got involved in the theater department at Northern. I was a music education major, uh, but uh, there, you know, life happens to people and certain things got me more involved in the theater department. And uh, at a time when I, quite frankly, that's what I needed was to be more involved in theater. And uh, so I got a very heavy theater minor, came that close to double majoring. I just didn't want to go to school for another year and uh, went off to graduate school to come uh, combine those two loves, music and theater. And uh, so I did a lot of that, did some touring and a lot of, you know, I was the song and dance man for many, many years and landed in Memphis in 1989. I was going to stay here for a year and end up in Chicago. Uh, that that was going to be my my Broadway was going to be Chicago because it was kind of halfway home I guess and uh, I'm I'm still in Memphis 32 years later and uh, now I'm one, leading a wonderful professional theater company we have three uh, three stages uh, we produce between 14 and 18 shows a season 13 education outreach programs that reach about 30,000 children teens and adults every year and. As you mentioned, I, I created the Unified Professional Theater Auditions back in 1995, and um, now it's the, the largest one. During normal times, it's a little weird right now during COVID, but uh, we're going all virtual this year. But uh, yeah, so about 1,100 folks every year trying to get folks work uh, to you know have these professional theater companies and hiring companies hire actors from all across the United States. So I get to do all of that, and I've got a wonderful staff of you know, 40 plus people plus, you know, another couple hundred contractors every year and teachers and um, live in the dream, uh, so to speak, you know. Did I know I was going to be doing this back in 1989, you know, when I when I got to Memphis? No, but here I am and I love it. So thank you for having me. Well, we're so excited that that's what you're doing. And it was really great to be able to come down and see UPTAs in action right before COVID. Right. <laughs> yeah. We stuck right under the radar there. <laughs> Um, so next, I'd like to welcome Janelle Rayom, a 2004 theater and entertainment arts graduate of NMU and the administrative director of Ballet Tech, a school of intensive classical dance training in New York City. Each year, Ballet Tech auditions approximately 30,000 children at 200 elementary schools across New York City. While evaluating each child's natural aptitude for classical dance, the school looks for an innate joy for movement, as well as flexibility, musicality, and coordination. As the administrative director, Janelle's principal role is overseeing the auditions, recruitment, and selecting students for the school. Welcome, Janelle. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Jill. Thank you. And hello, everybody. I um, see some familiar names on here tonight. So um, welcome, friends. It's, it's good to connect with everybody. Um, a little, little bit about myself. I, I, like Michael, was born and raised in Marquette. Um, went to NMU and got highly involved in the theater department. Um, graduated in 2004 and shortly after graduation, I moved to New York City and um, started working for Ballet Tech in the spring of 2005. So not long after I moved to New York. Um, first started out just part-time as I was auditioning and exploring the city. Uh, and then moved into a full-time position with the company in 2007, and the rest is history. Um, so I've been in New York now for 17 years, which is hard to believe that it's been that long since I left NMU. Um, but yeah, here I am. <laughs> Well, we're so happy to have you, and selfishly, I'm very happy to have you, because Janelle and I have been friends since we were babies. We started dancing together, so I'm very happy to have you on this panel, kind of representing dance, which is such a new part of um, what we officially do now <laughs> at yeah. NMU Theater and Dance. This is awesome. It's so awesome that it's finally an official part of the program. We are official. We are official. <laughs> 
All right, and continuing on next, I'd like to welcome Kelly Mischinski, a 2007 and 2009 graduate of NMU and owner and head of casting at The Voice Caster, the first voiceover casting company in the country. Kelly and her husband, Travis, who you'll meet in a minute, are the third owners of the company. Their primary focus is on voiceover casting for commercials, video games, animation, promos, narration, industrials, and anything else you can think of that needs a voice. Kelly was a theater and entertainment arts major in her undergrad and also received her Master of Arts in English from NMU. Welcome, Kelly. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hello, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I see some familiar names, which is great. Um, and, and quick little backstory, I actually was a dancer at Marquette Center for Dance. Um, and I always looked up to Jill and <laughs> Janelle um, when I was there. But I went to school, I was born and raised in Munising, so about an hour away from Marquette. Um, I originally went to Northern for pre-med. Um, <laughs> and then after taking intro to theater and getting involved in the theater program, I was like, eh. I want to be a doctor. I want to. I want to do something, you know, in in the theater field. Um, so I got my degree in theater. Um, I stuck around as a graduate artistic intern. Um, I kind of met somebody special and ended up staying an extra two years. Um, <laughs> the rest is history. Yep, we met at Northern. Um, and yeah, we we've been out here since two thousand nine. I we moved in July, and I got hired at the Voice Caster in October. Um, so just a few months later. I after moving and yeah the company is going to be 47 this year um and yeah very first casting house in the country um doing for voiceover. For, for voiceover um we cast pretty much everything uh the the very fortunate thing is during the pandemic we were you know able to to stay busy um sometimes even busier than ever just because voiceover is about the only thing that was happening um as far as the entertainment industry goes so I kind of I kind of fell into it I wasn't sure if you know I wanted to do more of the directing side um I interviewed uh to be an agent as well and casting was just really where I wanted to be and you know I love coming to work every day I get to cast and direct and I teach classes and and all of that so very fortunate I mean, that sounds really amazing and how wonderful that you were still able to, to do that throughout the pandemic. And strangely enough, I also started in pre-med at Northern. So it must <laughs> be some sort of, I feel like there's some sort of like drive that way. It must be like the ballet, very type A people. <laughs> Travis is like, mm -hmm, that's we'll not unique, you're saying. The type A thing isn't unique too. That, that's all, all right, I got it, I got it. <laughs> All right, and last but certainly not least, um, I'd love to introduce Travis Mischinski, a 2009 theater and entertainment arts graduate of NMU, professional actor and voice actor, and co-owner of The Voice Caster, the LA-based casting and recording studio we mentioned earlier. Uh, though he um, is an owner and directs with the company, Travis is primarily an actor and voice actor who is Currently the voice of Buzz the Bee for Honey Nut Cheerios. Oh, I do love Cheerios. Welcome, Travis. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, well, thank you for having me and hello everybody in the watching and who will watch. Um, yeah, I'm originally from Wisconsin and after touring a couple of schools, Northern was just the school for me. Um, I remember first starting there and, you know, not starting in the theater yet, just feeling very homesick and everything. But I kind of knew that like once the theater started, I was gonna be at home and then once it did, that was it, that was history. So um, yeah, so I met Kelly and uh, we moved out to LA in 2009. Um, and yeah, it's interesting how much, uh, I worked in the scene shop while I was at Northern and how much of that actually is kind of what helped support us at the very beginning when we first started out here because I was working uh, behind the scenes on uh, Destroy, Build, Destroy, and a couple of other TV shows, moving sets around, building sets, uh, some daytime courtroom shows of all things. Um, and yeah, and then just continuing to work on my craft and work on, you know, getting something, booking something, and eventually Kelly took over the voice caster here, and then I got looped into that, and that became our full-time thing, um, besides, you know, auditioning and everything that I was doing. And then, yeah, luckily enough, amazingly enough, Buzz the Bee actually came through Voicecaster 
And a lot of people are like, oh, so you're doing voiceover through VoiceCast or you get all the jobs, right? Well, no, I have no final say. We have no final say as far as who gets picked for what job. It's just yeah. a matter of, we just send them everybody. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we sent me and everybody else and I was luckily- Almost 200 people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they went through a lot of people for buzz. And it's kind of interesting because I was the prototype, meaning people are trying to match me and that's kind of like, well, don't don't find somebody to match me, just pick me. So. <laughs> Just hire me. Just hire me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Well, it's so wonderful to have all of you here. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into some questions that we have prepared. Um, but also just a quick reminder again to anyone who's tuning in, please feel free to drop questions in the Q&A. And I see our first one has come in. So that's exciting. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that, but I'll get us started with one from the hopper. Um, and let me, let's see, I think I'll send this one to Michael first, and then I'll maybe kind of see where people jump into the conversation. Um, how do you feel your education at NMU prepared you for your career? You know, that's uh, a great question. The, in, in hindsight, I realized I learned a lot more than I did while I was there, you know, and when you're in the middle of things, it can be so frenetic. I mean, we, we spent hours at the theater back when you could stay in buildings till two, three o'clock in the morning or, you know, sleep on couches. I know, you know, we don't do that anymore. But in hindsight, really what I, what I really cherish was the mentorship that I had with the faculty that was on staff, right? So, you know, names that a lot of folks out there know, you know, Dr. P, Dr. Panowski, obviously, uh, Dr. Poor, Daddy Bear, um, Shelly Russell, Vic Holiday. You know, these were all people who gave me great advice about, about the business and how, you know, to present yourself, how well to prepare yourself going out. And at the time, it was a real drag. Like, you know, the, the worst class I ever took, which was the best class I ever took, was a Saturday morning auditions class. Panowski used to make us get up for a nine o'clock class on a Saturday morning after having been out on a Friday night. Uh, and it was ridiculous, you know, and, you know, we were not happy at nine o'clock in the morning, but those folks who survived that auditions class were truly prepared. And quite frankly, those are the ones that went on and, you know, did well at SETCs and NETCs and ERTAs and everything else that went out there. And in hindsight, you know, I really, I really cherish those mentors I had at, at NMU and, and various places. I had, you know, I had a mentor at Marquette Senior High School too. Mrs. Clement was my mentor there. And then folks at San Diego State, uh, people who, and Daddy Bear, you know. <laughs> so one of my jobs that I've had, I, I taught intro to theater at the University of Memphis for 24 years. I was adjunct faculty. I had an eight o'clock class, 90 students every Tuesday, Thursday morning. And I cannot tell you how many times I emulated Daddy Bear with stories like, you know, we would get into the chapter and then you just veer off into some story that you went, uh, you know, that you participated in. Well, it all goes back to that mentorship. So that's my big, long daddy bear way of saying mentorship. That's what I cherish a lot about from, from Northern. <laughs> well, that explains a lot about Paul Truckee's intro to theater, theater experience class now, because the students love it because mm -hmm. they were like, we, he completely gets off the chapter and is yeah. just, telling all the stories, but that's what I think the students carry with them the most. It yeah. sounds like there's, I also have heard stories about the 9 a.m. Saturday class and <laughs> yeah. to myself, like, maybe this is the time to bring it back. <laughs> you know, you'll find, you'll find out those serious students, that's for sure. And, I just uh, and it, teach it. <laughs> well, that's, that's on you. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So Janelle, Kelly, Travis, um, how do you feel your education prepared you for your career? I think Janelle and Travis are the only two that started in theater and stayed the course. <laughs> well, for me, for me, I mean, the biggest thing is, is Dr. P. Um, you know, he, he was, 
more than even just a mentor to me. He was like a second dad to me. Um, I worked under under him in the box office. He, you know, well, first of all, Paul Truckee is actually his intro to theater class when he hopped up on a desk at one point because his wife was pregnant. Um, it was like, and he just was like dancing around and like, you know, he just had this energy and I was like, that's where I want to be. Um, and and I, I'm trying to remember what the show was he tried to oh I don't remember what it was but he he was like just audition for it and I was like I'm not really an actor but okay um and I ended up I was like no I'm not gonna do that but I am gonna get involved in the theater in a lot of other ways um but yeah it was it, I mean the faculty is huge and Dr. P just kind of took me under his wing and you know he taught me everything you know about about the business um, and I think that's why, you know, I, I only worked at, at VoiceCaster for three and a half years before my boss came to me and said, hey, I'm retiring and I want you to take over if you're interested. Um, 28 years old and I took over, a, you know, a company that's much older than me. And, you know, it, it's it's been great, but I wouldn't have been able to just jump into a business cold. Um, he literally handed me books and was like, here you go. Um, let's transfer bills into your name and all of that. It literally just kind of started with not a whole lot. Um, and thanks to Dr. P and his, you know, business side of things, it was, it was totally fine, you know, and I get to do the business side and the creative side. So that's so awesome. Janelle? Yeah, I mean, I'll echo a little bit of what Kelly was saying. Um, you know, I had a similar experience with Dr. P. Um, I also worked in the box office. So I feel like I learned a lot from Dr. P in the arts admin side of things. Um, and my job is huge in, in administration right now. Um, so I think I gained a lot of skills that way, which is, you know, a little separate from your traditional just regular classwork. Um, but a nice opportunity to be involved in the department in a different way. Um, and also what Michael said, you know, just all of the faculty who was there when I was there, Shelly and, uh, and Daddy Bear and, and Vic, and just the collaboration with everybody. Um, and I think the, the work ethic and um, the sense of of working as a team, the collaboration is huge. And I think it transfers to so many different parts of life and work. And I think theater students, you know, dancers, musicians, artists um, have incredible, you know, work ethic and, and drive and um, put in a lot of time and, and hours uh, to get it all done. And uh, it, it translates. So I'm grateful for my experiences at Northern. Um, also with it being such a small school, um, I think it was nice that we were able to have such uh, strong relationships with the faculty and have those mentorships and that one-on-one -on -one time and the ability to be involved in so many shows and so many projects and so many different aspects of the department, whether it be like Travis working in the scene shop or in the box office. Um, there was just so much opportunity for collaboration, um, which was incredibly valuable, and I loved it. That's awesome. All right, Travis, we're going to round this question out with you. Uh, yeah, I mean, just, you know, it, it also being a small school, it gives you so many opportunities to do so many different things, especially with, you know, the labs and, uh, uh, you know, student-directed shows and so many opportunities to have. And, I look at, I've seen some other people's resumes, you know, out here and they don't have as many things as I have just with all the opportunities that I had and took advantage of while I was at Northern to have that opportunity. And then also just, um, yeah, just in general, having, you know, some, some other technical skills to use and put towards other things that helped me get in different doors, other places. That's awesome. Well, thanks everyone. We have a couple of questions in the chat or in the Q&A. So I'm going to jump into those. So our first one is from Chris Charbonneau. Um, I was fortunate enough to be the first undergrad at NMU to direct the music direct to be the music director conductor for a show. 
uh, assistant conductor for Into the Woods and directed both Jesus Christ Superstar and Chess, which uh, began friendships with Shelley Russell and the late greats Panowski and Rapport. I spent 26 years as a band director and retired a year before COVID hit. So the question is to their old friend, Michael, how have you adjusted your theater to the COVID era? Uh, thanks for the question, Chris. Yes. And uh, Into the Woods was uh, a trip way back when with Truckee and that whole gang. Um, you know, so it, the entertainment field obviously has been been hit very hard. You know, we all had to close theaters and it, you know, very similar to the restaurant industry and, and you know, so many others. And uh, what was fortunate for us, uh, and I've been on numerous Zooms over the last, you know, 22 months, um, talking about how we were able to get through COVID. And the bottom line is preparation. And it goes back to, you know, what Janelle said, things that Panowski taught us and these other folks that, again, were my mentors. Uh, you can't have show without the business part of it, right? And so you have to operate in such a way that you can exist. I mean, we can be, you know, extremely creative and artistic if we want to have it as a business, we have to make certain choices in order to continue existing, right? So our organization, um, I was very fortunate. One of my other mentors was our founder, Jackie Nichols, who started Playhouse on the Square back in 1969 as a high school student. He was extremely fiscally conservative. Creatively, there was nothing he wouldn't produce. I mean, literally nothing he would not produce. But at the end of the day, it had to be paid for, right? So we were fortunate enough to have, uh, when I became executive producer back in 2018, an extremely strong fiscal position so that when we closed our doors in March 2020, we, we shut down three shows that were on stage and two other shows that were in rehearsal. So right out of the gate, we were shutting down five shows naively thinking this will be will be done in a few weeks <laughs> you know um obviously that changed very quickly what we did with our managing director Whitney Joe and our, you know our, our board of directors we came up with literally six different financial scenarios what will happen if if we have to stay closed for two months uh four months six months an entire season well, that's exactly what ended up happening. We The worst case scenario came about and we had to cancel an entire season. We had planned for it and we had financial reserves in place. Uh, and that was instilled in me going certainly back to Panowski and, and uh, but throughout my, my career, uh, you know, I was, when I was at San Diego State, I was a co-coordinator for uh, ACTF. Um, for, you know, which was California, Utah, Colorado, Nevada, you know, talk about wrangling cats with, you know, the red tape of universities, right? Uh, I learned a lot about that. So when I became uh, the executive, well, when I started off in the administrative side of things here at the theater as associate producer, and then I was the development director, and then the executive producer, those financial um, preparations really were what got us through the beginnings of COVID. We were fortunate. We didn't have to, we didn't fire anybody. Uh, we, we paid off all the contracts of all the shows that we hired folks for. So even though they may not have stepped on stage or in a rehearsal room, they got paid. Uh, we didn't cut anybody's salaries. And we put in place, uh, well, prior to COVID, we had in place a six-year pro forma. I didn't know what a pro forma was, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, until about a year before COVID because we were getting some other financial plans in place. So because we had the business side in place, we were then able to ramp out how we could be creative during COVID. We knew we couldn't have uh, audiences in at that time, but I had, we're a resident company. So we have associate company members, interns, we have resident company members. This is where they fill their resume uh, when they're in Memphis. So we produced shows for ourselves without an audience. We fully produced shows that our folks acted in, that they designed, and you know we paid the licensing rights for it so we could do it one time, and we were able to have folks you know build out their resumes until we could then get into a streaming situation, 
So we hired, um, well, we hired one of our interns who had videography experience. That has now turned into a full-time videography position. And that has now earned revenue for us. So uh, in fact, we opened a show on Friday night called Goodbye Levy. It's part of our playwriting series, which is similar to what Panowski started way back when, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, part of that uh, template is streaming as well as uh, doing those shows live. So it was a lot of, you know, the word that's ever used is pivoting, but that's, that's exactly what everybody did. Uh, we will never go back to normal, the royal we. None of us are ever gonna go back to the way it was in February of 2020. So we have to plan for the future. And if it's gonna be a business, we have to plan for the business side of it so we can continue to create. Otherwise, we can just create, but don't expect to make a living from it, which is a challenge. So, uh, you know, much more to that story, but that's basically how we wended our way through COVID and where we are right now. And hopefully we'll come out, you know, stronger and better, bigger, better, faster, stronger. Well, that's awesome. And it's so great to hear. And so interesting, you know, on the business side of things and hearing Kelly and Janelle talk about, you know, their box office box office experience with Dr. Panowski and how well that served them. I mean, we never know what kind of situations we're going to end up in where you're really going to need that skill set in right. a big way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there is one more question in the chat box from Dave O'Connor, wanting to know if anyone would be interested in him as an actor who is a cybersecurity professional, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> So just in case you need sure. any cybersecurity professionals, Dave O'Connor <laughs> is on the lookout. Um, so I think I'll jump into the next question um, from kind of our question bank. Um, and I'll send this one to Travis first. Um, what was a really exciting project you worked on while you were a student at NMU? Uh, I think my the favorite thing that I worked on was Full Monty. Uh, you know, uh, it's probably the only time I've been part of something where sex sells and I've been part of that sex. Uh, that was one of the few shows. I mean, no, not that it wasn't in the few, but it was amazing the turnout for that show. I, as much as, that, that's the biggest theater I've, I've been in so far is NMU's, or uh, yeah, NMU's FRT theater. And I still think that having that many people watching me at one time has definitely been like just a sense of calm anytime I've done anything else because at that point it doesn't matter how many more people are watching you there's so many um but I guess one other little tidbit was doing uh hello dolly and uh having a mic for my voice but also a mic for a little soft shoe <laughs> I was rigged up with two mics there at that one point that's awesome. I have, um, uh, there's a comment in the chat from Betsy saying, especially when the light panel failed. And I, I don't remember what year this was. And I don't remember if I was still at Northern, if, or if I had already headed to New York by then. But um, I mean, that story made it way to, made its way to me wherever I was. And it's now infamous because we just did Re Full Monty again. And everyone was like, Ke again, Kelly Truckee directed. And she was like, I've heard the stories. I don't care what happens during the show, but that light cue at the end better work <laughs> because everybody heard, everybody knows the story. So yep. bless all of you for, <laughs> for surviving that. Um, I'm going to send the same question to Janelle. Um, what was a really exciting project that you worked on while you were a student at NMU? Oh, um, that's a really hard question. I think every like every show that I worked on was was unique and and special and fun. Um, so it's really hard to to narrow it down. Um, I, I'll go back to what I was saying before. I, I think being in a smaller setting and having so many opportunities was awesome. Um, unique to my situation, you know, there wasn't really a dance program at that time. Um, but Dr. P and, and Shelly um, both were really great with allowing me to have that time and that experience and entrusted me to choreograph shows um, and work in that way. And I think those are the experiences that I that I really loved the most. Um, I loved working on a chorus line, being a dancer, 
Um, that was a super, super fun show. Um, I loved putting together um, Oklahoma uh, and the full Dream Ballet dance sequence. Um, coming back to do Hello Dolly after I had graduated um, was also really fun. Um, and yeah, Scarlet Pimpernel, I mean, the music, the costumes, I mean, there's just, there's just so much, um, so much love for that department and so many fond memories of so many shows. Um, and also being raised in Marquette, I was involved in some productions even before I was a student there. So um, I have a lot of fond memories of, of projects and shows, you know, from that time as well. That's so awesome. Thank you. Okay, Kelly, over to you. Same question, because I, this is, it's so great. And I think the people who are watching from home are, are having fun engaging in kind of this reminiscing. So let's, I also like that Michael says back in his day, there were no mics, you kids these days. <laughs> All right, take it away, Kelly. <laughs> I mean, two things are coming to mind. The first is Beauty and the Beast. That production was just incredible with the things that we did. You know, I was very involved with everything backstage. Um, you know, I have I have a lot of fond memories um, from that. That's probably one of those shows where I met a lot of, you know, lifelong friends and all of that as well. Um, but I think my, my biggest takeaway is um, I was the very first student, I was a grad student, um, and I was the very first student who they allowed to direct the Panowski Playwriting Award winner. Um, so I got to direct a main stage show, um, which was incredible. I mean, directing is, you know, that's, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I had done a lot of stage managing. Um, I did a lot of, a lot of shows in the black box. Um, I interned for the, the directing theory class, you know, all of that. I, I did a lot of directing things. Um, I was actually, during that same time, I was directing for Munison High School's Drama Club as well. So I was making that drive, you know, a few times a week. Um, but yeah, directing the Playwriting Award winner and actually seeing my work, you know, on the main stage um, was a huge thing for me. That was That was something that was very, you know, very, very motivating for me. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so cool. I, and that's, I've like, I'm also loving this because I'm hearing all of the, all of the stories of, you know, this department and the history of this department and trying to pick up a little bit more of that institutional knowledge because Paul's the last one le <laughs> left from like the before times. So we're really trying to make sure that we, we know all of the stories um, and Kelly, just so you know, Jackie said Tracks in the Snow was honored to be your production manager for that. Oh, hi, Jackie. <laughs> okay, Michael, on to you. Really exciting project that you worked on while you were a student at NMU. So, you know, I did a lot of wonderful productions. And um, again, you know, it's everything's in hindsight now. You know, I go, well, wow, I learned so much, you know, from the various productions I did, Cabaret and uh, Damn Yankees and Dylan Daniel Webster, things like that. But one of the one of the stories I tell, and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but it was a learning experience for me. Was when I did the Devil and Daniel Webster, and it was a one hour operetta, and um, I was playing the devil. And there's a scene in the opening the opening scene. Uh, they're they're having like a hoedown on the on the farm, and the fiddle player is playing and they're singing and dancing. And uh, I come out and suddenly the fiddle player can't play anymore because the devil is there and, you know, screwing up the music and things like that. And the, uh, the, the devil, me, within the music is basically making fun of this fiddle player going, oh, you don't know how to, you know, play a fiddle. And the fiddle player comes up with the violin that he was playing and he's supposed to go here, see what you can do with it. And then the, the devil goes off and plays, you know, the devil goes down to Georgia or something like that. Uh, the actor who is playing that farmer, that fiddle player was Bobby Glenn Brown. And Bobby Glenn took that fiddle this particular night and said, here, see what you can do with it and put the fiddle through my head and smack me right here. And I was stunned. And, uh, but I, you know, the consummate professional that I was, uh, 
pretended like nothing happened. And I went on with the song. And But as I'm going around the stage singing to all the various other actors on stage, they're looking at me funny. They're glancing at me. And I get halfway through the song and I notice that there's blood coming down my nose. And I didn't know it uh, until I saw it. And of course, this is, you know, back in the day where blood was not a scary thing necessarily, you know, on stage. So of course I was playing with the blood and doing things. After the show, I had people coming up to me after the show going, that blood was so believable on the stage. That was such a cool special effect. And then other people going, you know what, you were the devil, the devil wouldn't bleed. That wasn't, that was, what a, you know, stupid choice that was or whatever the, you know, what I learned from that moment is that an audience will believe anything you put in front of them. They will believe anything that you tell them or do in front of them if you're committed to it. And I, I tell that story oftentimes to, you know, when I'm doing auditions classes or anything like that, that if you're committed to that moment, they will go, the audience will go with you because you are creating a brand new world for them. Never forgave uh, Bobby Glenn Brown for hitting me in the face. I'm kidding, obviously. And it was a great story at the emergency room that night when I went in full costume to the emergency room to get stitches. So, but uh, dressed yeah. Dressed as the devil. <laughs> That's right, dressed as the devil. But, but that was my takeaway, you know, from Northern uh, commitment and audiences will go with you wherever you take them. Yeah. I think that's actually very funny. And knowing Bobby Glenn Brown, that of course makes the story or story even just a little bit funner. You know, I've, there's been an, a handful of stories that I've heard since I have come back to NMU that somehow in, involve Bobby Glenn Brown. And I think one was like a, a cup might have gone through a window or something. I don't know. Things got wild back in the day. It sounds like somebody was very upset. I think it might have been Dr. P. <laughs> So, um, okay, so there aren't any further questions in the chat box, so I'm going to jump back into our question bank, and I'm going to kind of move us into the present a little bit here, and we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about where each of you are in your current positions. Um, so the question is, um, how do you feel your work impacts the community that you live in? And Janelle, I'm going to send this question to you first. Thank you. Um, so my organization um, is very unique in that um, we find children uh, who might have a potential for dance rather than necessarily kids coming to us. Um, so we go out into um, New York City public schools um, and audition students for our program. Um, it's a tuition-free program, which is awesome. It's, so it provides opportunity and access for kids who um, may or may not uh, have the resources to participate in dance and also allows them the opportunity to discover if it's something that they're interested in. Um, oftentimes, it's they've never been exposed to it. Um, so we go out into the community and we find these children and we we identify them and say hey I think you'd be really good at this why don't you come you know take some classes and try it out um, and we audition an average of 25 to 30 thousand children every year um, and they first start by coming to a introductory level class for several weeks and then we continue to assess their progress and potential and identify the kids who might be good candidates for the full-time school. Um, and then we have a full program where they do their academics as well as their dance classes. And for a lot of these kids, um, most of these kids, it's really a life-changing experience. Um, it gets them out of their neighborhoods, um, to a very specialized school where they can study in a, in a very rigorous way, um, all tuition free again, which is amazing. Um, I think we're the first and maybe still only tuition free um, ballet school in the country. Um, so I think it has a huge impact in the community in New York City specifically um, just for purpose of, of access and opportunity um, for children to have a place to, to dance and to learn um, and to thrive and to grow. 
which is so great. And I was, I've been lucky enough to, at one point in time, work in the same building as Janelle, which was really fun and kind of crazy since we've been friends since we were so little. Um, but also a couple of years ago, happened to be out in New York uh, when her students were doing their final show at the Joyce Theater. And I was just completely blown away by how wonderful the students performed, number one, but speaking to some of the students afterwards in the lobby, just what what wonderful young people you get the opportunity to work with and how like lovely and and gracious they were. And I think it's very clear that 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 kind of behavior is also modeled in, yeah. Thank you, in their learning environment, which I think is really great. So quick follow up question to that. Um, what is your favorite part of your job? The kids. I mean, hands down, it's the kids. Um, the students are are awesome. Um, and I love that I'm able to kind of pass along to the next generation and and create, you know, a new a new generation of dancers. It's so exciting. So Michael, I'm going to send the same questions your way. So number one, how do you feel your work impacts the community that you live in? Yeah, you know, so the arts affect every aspect of people's lives, right? And it depends on how we present that art to, to our community. Um, it certainly helps us as creators, as artists. It, you know, fills our soul. It, you know, does all of the good mojo things for us. But there truly is, you know, you could spot off all kinds of studies out there, you know, how the arts impact education, um, all kinds of, you know, levels of society, demographics, things like that. But it really is a community builder. Um, so our theater, uh, which I've been so fortunate to be a part of now for 32 years, uh, has been in Memphis. It started off as an organization, and it still is, but it started off as a place where they could talk about things and present ideas that quite frankly were not um, comfortable issues to deal with back in the late 60s, right? So dealing with race and gender and sexuality and sex, drugs and rock and roll. And uh, in a relatively conservative part of the country. And interestingly enough, it, you know, certain comparisons to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in terms of things you can't or shouldn't talk about and, you know, so, what we have learned is that we want to continue reflecting the diversity of our community. And certainly in Memphis, you know, Shelby County where we are, it's about 60, 65% African-American, 35, 40%, everything else. Uh, but it's also a very urban area right next to a very rural area because we're in the Southwest uh, corner of Tennessee. So we've got Northwest, Missis uh, yeah, Northwest Mississippi, Eastern Arkansas. Um, so our job is to make sure we re reflect as much of that as we possibly can in our programming and to never turn anybody away. Again, it gets back to the business side of things, right? If you're not going to turn people away, you still have to pay people. You still have to license. You still have to pay for the rights. Um, so the business side becomes important. The business side of that also then reflects into the growth of your community. And to get nerdy for a second, right, in, in metropolitan areas, and I would say Marquette is the metropolitan area of the Upper Peninsula, you want to attract and attain talent for more than three years. If they stay more than three years, chances are they'll stay for a longer period of time. Well, the arts is one of those components, right? Good education, good neighborhood, safety, good schools, and, uh, and the arts. You wanna have good cultural opportunities. So when we built our brand new theater back, it's 11 years old now, uh, this January, this month, we built a brand new theater. We raised uh, 15 and a half million dollars uh, designed by the same folks that did Steppenwolf in Chicago. In fact, it's the same design, minus about hundred seats. We knew that if we built our theater that the community around us would rise up uh, as well. We were in a relatively, not, I wouldn't say a depressed neighborhood, but it was certainly on the decline. Uh, you know, they wanted to put in uh, big grocery stores and strip clubs and crap like that. When we decided to build what we put in place, develop, local developers came on board as well, too. And now we have a thriving arts district. We have our three theaters. 
We have uh, the, the um, African-American theater across the street from us, Hattie Lou. We've got Ballet Memphis, 100 yards down the street from us. We have a movie art house, thriving restaurants and bars and retail. And now they're building apartment buildings and uh, you know, getting the residential side uh, back into the city core. And it all started because we put our $15.5 million down you know, 11, 12 years ago when we started building. So we know from firsthand uh, experience that the arts build communities. It builds us personally, spiritually, you know, whatever that word is for you. But it's, it's a good business model if you have people who know how to run the business, of course, uh, to, to build your community. And the education and the, the retention and attraction of talent comes with that. So it's palpable. The arts are palpable. And uh, it's an extremely important thing to have. So, yeah, that's what that's what the effect we've seen. Well, that's amazing. And I mean, I, I just think it's so great what all of our al alumni are out there doing. And now also I'm missing the restaurants in Memphis. Now that you've mentioned that, I'm like, really, now I'm sad. Now I'm more. sad that now there's are more, virtual. So, <laughs> so now, now we're just going to have to go for vacation for fun. Um, so in that same vein, then what is your favorite part of your job? Uh, gosh, you know, there's so many aspects to it. Um, my favorite thing at the end of the day is putting on plays. I mean, that's what I, that's what I wish I could do mostly. Um, but you know, over the last two years, two and a half years, it's been mostly HR, uh, which is not my favorite thing. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't go no. to school for <laughs> HR, right? But I think you'll find more and more folks who are leading arts organizations. And I'm, I, I know Kelly and Travis and Janelle feel this as well too, right? There are so many more um, concerns and facets to HR than we were ever trained to know. And, uh, uh, you know, for all the obvious reasons that are out in the world over these last two years, right? Um, so that's not my favorite part. So yeah, someday I want to go back just putting on plays, <laughs> you know, maybe be in a I, show. I feel like that day is coming. It, it's got to be, it's coming, it's coming yeah. soon. I can feel it. 2022, we've got to put the energy out there. But the, the true okay. answer is working, is working with the people I work with. I, you know, I wouldn't be where I am doing what I am doing without all of my fantastic employees and staff and, you know, the artists I work with. If, if you don't like working who you're working with, then you're working in the wrong place. So I've been here 32 Absolutely. years. So I might, I must like some of it. <laughs> At least a little bit, at least a couple people. Right. All right. So Kelly and Travis, I'm going to send it over to you next. So how do you feel your work impacts the community that you live in? I mean, voiceover is one of those things where every, everybody hears it. Uh, you know, every single day, you have all heard work that we've done, you know, if you TV, radio, you know, online, you've heard something that we've cast. Um, and, you know, it's, we've, we've also just been able to be a part of some amazing projects. Um, one that comes to mind is, uh, we we did all of the casting and everything, you know, completely pro bono. Um, very happy to do it for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Um, we cast a lot of different animated characters. They they did this amazing series of videos um, for kids who had brain tumors and were in the hospital. So it's like there's this animated character telling you what a blood transfusion is, um, or an animated character telling you about your brain tumor or another procedure or you know that kind of a thing. It was. Oh my gosh, what like three or four years yeah. of kind of just constantly casting all of these different videos and putting together this whole library for kids who are in the hospital. Um, and so that that was an amazing, amazing project that we worked on um, that, you know, has has a huge impact. Um, especially for kids. And um, we've done workshops uh, through Easter Seals um, for people with disabilities, all different types of disabilities, um, and, you know, teaching voiceover so that they can learn, you know, kind of a different area of acting. Um, and then the nice thing is, is we've, you know, we've done casting where it's, you know, specifically looking for somebody with disabilities. So, you know, it's, we, we get to work with, you know, such a, we get to do so many, so many things and, you know, just, just all of the diversity and the people that we get to work with, um, people coming from, you know, all walks of life. So yeah, that's, that's been, that's been amazing to be able to do. Yeah. 
it's so exciting because your, your community is global. It's, it's limitless, <laughs> which is so cool. Yeah. All right. So favorite parts of the job for both of you. I mean, for me, it's the people. Um, I think that's the thing that I, that I missed the most working remotely is everybody was on Zoom and, you know, I'm teaching classes online and, you know, all of my interaction was you know, either over the computer or over the phone. Um, but the people that I get to work with, I get to work with so many different people, um, amazing people and and all different, stat, you know, we, statures. We, you know, just, we have celebrities who come in and, um, you know, well, well-known well people that, that you guys would know as well, um, who we, you know, we get to call friends, you know. Um, and every day is different. You know, every project is different. Every, you know, every need is different. Um, I love that I can, you know, when I've had too much of the, the business side, it's like, okay, I can go to the creative side or, or when a project is, you know, just, it's, it's a tough project and there's a lot to do on it. Sometimes I need that paperwork break to like turn my brain off and do something else. Um, and we have an, we have an amazing staff, our whole team, um, you know, is just, I, we call them our family. Like it's, it's our voice caster family. Um, cause we're all, we're all so close. So very, very fortunate for all of that every day. Yeah. And I just, I like that. I, you know, maybe a little selfishly get to play. I get to play on both sides of the, of the booth. So, I mean, that's kind of what I want to do this for. So it's awesome that I get to. I mean, what could be better than that? I mean, I think that's kind of kind of amazing. <laughs> that's so exciting. All right, one last question that actually came in um, from our home viewers, and I'll open this up to all of you because it, there may or not may or may not be a response. Um, is there a show that you participated in at NMU that you went on to direct or produce during your professional career? This is also from Chris Charbonneau. Anyone? No yes. double dipping? <laughs> yes? Yeah. Yes. Oh, sure. You know, um, yeah. So I was in Cabaret. Uh, I, I was in Cabaret again uh, many years later when I really kind of knew more of what I was doing. Um, and then we produced it uh, for sure. Uh, Damn Yankees I was in uh, in Northern. I was in it again when I was out in my career doing stuff. Um, never did De Devil and Daniel Webster again because of my horrible experience I had with that, but, uh, I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. uh, yeah, you know, there, that's one of the great things about my journey for me was I got, I got to do a lot of acting and singing and dancing in shows I had done when I was in college and high school, quite frankly, and, and then graduate school. Um, and there's a finite number of those shows, although so many great new ones. So, we try not to repeat as much anymore, but yeah, yeah, I've, I have revisited some of those old chestnuts for sure. I think that's so great. And I'm just kind of, you know, as I'm listening to you all, I'm just thinking to myself as we move forward with productions from our student, with our students, it actually would be really great if it's a show that we have done previously um, at the university to actually reach back out to the cast of who was in that and actually try to connect them back um, to the current students, because I just think there's such an interesting renaissance starting to happen right now with some of our students where they're really interested in, you know, what, what we're doing as a, a department is so new, but we know that theater and dance at NMU is not new. And I think a lot of our students are starting to go, okay, well, like, what is the history? Because I think we're coming up on a pretty big anniversary of the program. I think we're somewhere in the 60s coming up here pretty soon that theater has been a, a program at NMU. So uh, watch out because all of you who are in the chat, in the chat box <laughs> and those of you on the screen, we may be circling back to you sooner than, than you realize as we start to think about, you know, shows that we're bringing back or shows that are similar and just really trying to, you know, bridge the generations between the students that we have now and the students that have graduated from our program and just really trying to continue to build that alumni network and, and those connections because one of the best parts about my job is also the people. 
And the worst part about my job is also the people because they graduate and they leave. Um, and it makes me very sad and upset at the end of every year. I really don't like it. And the students like can tell when April is coming because I start to get like a little bit testy. <laughs> like if I just fail you, you can't graduate right now. <laughs> so I could keep you for at least one more semester. Um, but I think it would be really great. <laughs> Sorry, what, Kelly? And you work with Bill Dignite, so. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I literally, it, I, quite frankly, I don't think life gets any better than this. I just want you all to know that and how grateful I am for the way that you paved. Because when I was at Northern, I was really actually not involved in the theater department. Janelle was my, <laughs> was my connection. So I, I would come to watch her in the shows. So um, this is very exciting from our perspective. And we are just... We're so thankful for you coming back and doing this panel for us and you know hopefully being a resource for our students and 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 mentors for our students you know beyond the faculty and and we're just we're very grateful for the foundation that you all laid for what we get to do now which is really exciting so well and jill i'll give you you and bill a lot of credit for what you all are doing because i knew there were some lean years certainly between when i was there in the in, in the 80s and I, I think, you know, especially now with partnering, you know, getting dance involved, you know, uh, getting music more involved, you know, back in the day, nobody ever spoke to each other. And, you know, you're like five feet away from each other. Right. Uh, and I think you and I think your whole team has done a great job. And there are there are many more of us alumni out there, you know, the Leah Hawkins of the world and the John Ogles and the, the Francine Thomas Reynolds of the world who are out there doing stuff who can really um, bring a lot of depth and knowledge to that. So uh, from my, you know, vantage point, congratulations and thank you for letting us be a part of what you're doing. I think it's great. Oh my gosh, we we can't say thank you enough and we're so excited about about where this is going and we're hiring another faculty member and hiring a, a full-time sound and media designer now. So we're like, it's really happening. We have a full-time technical director who just gets to be the technical director. So it's very exciting, but also we have 12 shows this year. So we, like, we need the people to do the things. And on that note, um, it's about eight o'clock. So Kylie tells me that it's about time to wrap this up now. Um, so thank you again so, so much to everyone who has been tuning in and to our panelists, and I'm going to send it back over to Kylie. Yeah, thank you. I really enjoyed this conversation, and we probably could sit here and talk for another hour. So um, that just tells me we probably have to do another one of these sometimes, sometime in the future. So um, thank you all so much. Uh, really appreciate all of you panelists. Jill, thank you for your time. Um, we love hearing uh, hearing from our alumni and seeing all the amazing things that you guys are doing and, and how NMU helped shape um, some of that. And uh, we just love that you stay connected to the university and same with everybody who's joining us. Thank you um, for joining in. And again, thank you for staying connected to NMU. A um, couple last minute things. I'll be sending out a short survey tomorrow to everybody who attended. So let us know if there are um, upcoming topics you'd like to hear about or other things that you'd like to hear from us or other ways that you'd like to stay connected. Um, and then I'm also gonna be choosing one winner from tonight's uh, attendees to win a sweet alumni t-shirt. So make sure you keep an eye on your email. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, though, uh, for any of our panelists, feel free to send them to alumni at nmu.edu, and we'll make sure that they get that question um, in front of them. Uh, keep in touch with us on social media. Keep staying connected. Sign up for Wildcats Connect, and um, go Wildcats. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. <laughs>